So we'll come back everybody to the second part of the lecture related to SRAM, Open RAM. So we discussed in the first part about the motivation of using this uh, Open RAM software, what you can do with it, and uh, why and how and what. Now we will continue talking about this SRAM instead of calling it SRSRAM I'm gonna just for simplicity call it SRAM software so here this slide shows you the main features that SRAM has so the first feature is 45G user equipment and radio access network you can fully have a a, you can fully configure a 5G network or 4G network using this software. Basically, all the components are built in software and it runs on off the shelf compute and direct hardware, which is the second point of this of the features related to SRAM. And this is why this is so significant and so important and different than all the other previous solutions. Because in the old days, when Ericsson, for example, or Nokia, or Huawei, or any big provider, network provider, or network vendor, it provides you with a solution, they used to provide, they provide basically a hardware coupled with a software. And those two things are proprietary, which means that they can only work with each other and you cannot replace the hardware with another hardware from the market or the software with another software. They can, you, in order to run a network, you need to buy these things from the vendor and they are coupled with each other and they only work with each other, not with any other hardware. What's good about this software, it can run on any almost a normal available hardware that are available in the market and you can buy them for low cost. You can build user equipment, G node B, E node B by just using uh, general purpose hardware and you install the software on top of it and, with, and, and it will be running smoothly. The last feature is uh, it can achieve high performance without dedicated hardware accelerators. And this is due to the efficiency in building the software related to RAM and user equipment. These features together make the solution provided by SRS RAM a very attractive solution to be used for building practical wireless communication networks. So the main components of the SRAN software includes the user equipment, which is the smartphone, and the implementation includes a full stack 4G and 5G user equipment. Full stack means it has the physical layer implementation, the Mac layer implementation, and the network uh, to, to the transport, I believe. And SRS E node B, it has also the full stack 4G E node B base station, a physical, a physical layer, Mac layer, and the, the transport layer. And this RS E evolved packet core. EPC is the evolved, evolved packet core, which is like the data center, the server, the, core, the network core, which provides the services. And this will be responsible for implementing MME, HSS, and SPGW. MME, Mobility Management Entity. This is responsible for managing the mobility of the devices in your network. The HSS is the home subscriber system, which includes and register the information of each user equipment, each mobile. And uh, the... the and Software packet gateway, this is kind of a router which is responsible for routing the traffic in your network. And this software, the SRAM software, runs in Linux operating system, not Windows or any other one, using off-the-shelf computer and radio hardware. So here 
or what you need to do here uh, we have the USRB which is the RF front end which contains the antennas and the RF chain and you have the user equipment the SRS user equipment which is the software responsible for building the user equipment modem you install it on machine one on PC one and this acts like the smartphone this acts like the smartphone in your hand and on the other machine on the other PC you need to have it's very important that you have two PCs if you want to use hardware if you want to use the virtual hardware it's okay to have one PC but here you have two PCs in the other PC you have the RF front end which is the USRB device as well connected with the software that uh, that creates the E node B and the software that creates the core and this can get can be connected with the internet so that it can provide the services and application of the internet and communicate them to the user equipment so this is what we will be building but we will build it in two phases the first phase we will build it using virtual hardware now what's the virtual hardware the virtual hardware enables you enables you to run the software provided by SRS RAN including the user equipment inode B evolve packet and exchange data and messages and IQ samples without the need to have hardware why why would you need such a thing because sometimes you need to use this software for simulation purposes only you don't need to practically implement it with hardware and send the signal over the air you want it you want just to simulate your idea your new idea that you want to implement with the e node B or user equipment you don't need in this case hardware if you want also to modify the code in the user equipment or modify the code in the e node B to reflect the functionality the, ad the additional new functionality that you want to test in your network in this case you don't need the RF front end as well so this is very amazing feature here that you can if you want to use it for simulation purposes you you just use the virtual drive and I will show you how to use this in the next lecture and if you want to run practical wireless network where users can get connected to the base station you need uh, to use USRB devices now what's the cost of these USRB devices it, it depends on the type of on the model and uh, version and many things actually but the USRB devices, the cost of each one of them goes up to 8,000 US dollar. Now, this is maybe expensive for a student, but this is nothing compared to the cost of a base station that can cost thousands of dollars above one, maybe 50, 100,000. Along, along, beside the expenses of the software running and coupled with the hardware of the base station. So here we present example of companies using the SRAN software, even Nokia, Nokia, which is an independent provider and vendor providing their own hardware and software. They are using this software. We have also the analog devices, very big company, which, which is specialized in producing um, products electronic products and hardware products and sheets with them explaining how they function we have the national instrument which is USRB dedicated so they were testing it with you with their devices the USRB if it works or not we have iDirect P3 we have Fairwaves we have uh, MIT and we have some other companies as well and uh, ETRI is a standardization organization in Europe as well using this software. Some other companies as well, AST, NIC, Open Cellular, Telecom Infra Project, Paystyle, uh, University of Colorado, APIQ Solution, 
and some other companies as well and universities. So this means that many companies, many universities, many research labs are trusting this hardware. And it's an open source. Everybody can check it. Everybody can use it. Everybody can verify it. And everybody also can contribute there. There is a license you need to maybe for those who want to contribute and improve the software, there is a license you need to download it and fill the information in it and send it to the company and you will be able to add your algorithms and improve the software more if you would love to do this. So another important thing to state here is that the S-TRAN software follows and complies with the Open RAN concept. What's the concept of Open RAN? Open RAN is a new movement by operators and some new startup companies around the world to disaggregate the hardware from the software so that any, any software can run on any hardware. They are not coupled anymore. The hardware is public. You can buy it from any uh, provider, any equipment manufacturer. And the software can run with this hardware, and the hardware can run with any software. So where is the competition here? The competition in the software. It becomes just like the computer systems. You have general purpose uh, computer, and this computer can run any operating system, any, any application, any software program. So here in the base station, you have the antennas and you have the base fan unit and the remote radio unit. So instead of having these, uh, the re remote radio unit and base fan unit, instead of having them provided to you as black box and you don't have any capabilities on replacing them or modifying them, with the open RAM concept, you are able to to buy a remote radio unit, which is the, which includes the DAC and ADAC and RF equipment from public provider, and this you can connect it with any software. So this make it uh, it enables you to reduce the capital. Uh, to to make such a base station and it has open interfaces uh, it can be scalable and agile flexible it's easy to replace and add new features to your base station if a company is producing a better remote radio unit or a better hardware you can always replace easily because this hardware is not coupled or specific to just one software you can easily make up the grades, you can reduce the operational expenses, avoids vendor lock-in, means you don't need to be stuck with a single vendor. You can switch and move between a vendor to another. The vendor that provides you better quality, better performance, better, uh, better cost, you go with it. And you completely disaggregate the hardware from the software. So those are all attractive features that are associated with the open RAM concept. For example, the interfaces here, they will be open. Any vendor software can work on the hardware and the hardware can be server, code server, with proprietary software with virtualized function. So the, the innovation here will be in the software and the companies will be selling the software and the hardware, but independently, they are not coupled together. So this is the main concept of Open RAM. And there is something called Virtual RAM, which is not the same as Open RAM, because in the Virtual RAM, the hardware and the interfaces are proprietary, which means they are vendor specific if you buy the hardware you need to buy the software if you get the software you need to buy the hardware they are coupled with each other they are not open not anybody can play with them not any company can integrate with them because they are closed system while in open ran the hardware 
uh, the interfaces are open, they are not proprietary. Any vendor software can work on this hardware. When I say open interfaces, it means that any vendor software can work on the hardware. And codes-based hardware, which, be, which can be purchased from any uh, manufacturer or designer for hardware devices. So virtual software running in open interface hardware is called open RAM. Software running on any hardware. This is open RAM. Anything else is not open RAM. Even if you name it some other names to for marketing purposes or to maybe dis disguise the users or hide some information from them. But at the end of the day, open RAM concept is very clear. You want any software to run on any hardware. Any hardware to be compatible with any software. Unlike the old system that's produced by traditional vendors that provide you the software with the hardware, you cannot buy just one of them. And you need to be stuck in their system. So this also enable the concept of open RAM makes the automation much better and easier. Automation for data center, the site, uh, you can easily make automate set up network environment with cloud automation. Uh, the, the open RAM is very user friendly with cloud with the cloud concept. You can make your your whole telecom network connects with a cloud server and uh, they can seamlessly seamlessly exchange and serve exchange information and serve content together while in the old system this was not possible actually so you can also use machine learning and ai to improve the automation why automation is important because it reduces the cost of operating your network and you don't need uh, engineers to keep monitoring your key, the, key, the KPIs of your network because now you have uh, machine learning based programs that can monitor your network and automate things seamlessly and this is actually many companies are pushing in this direction and they try to utilize especially machine learning to improve the automation of their network and the, the main benefit of doing this is to reduce the cost once you reduce the cost you can reduce the the you can become more competitive in the market and reduce the expenses on the user equipment device on the smartphone user and therefore you will be more attractive and more competitive the cloud automation here it's it's user friendly with cloud automation and all the benefits that it has it automates management and operation of infrastructure manages computer storage and network Common tasks are automated, reduces administrative overhead, facilitates, uh, facilitate, facilitates in application lifecycle management, reduces time, increases resource utilization and power consumption efficiency, enables continuous deployment of application, frees up people bandwidth to focus on new value creation. All these as well are important features that are desirable to be used in the network. And SRAM and Open RAM concept enables all these features to to any communication network that want to benefit from the automation concept. And now there is even uh, there is even new concept called the all Gs. Uh, currently, for example, many mobile operators they have. At the big in in 90s they have built the 2G network, and then when 3G came came up uh, with the data services and users started using the internet on their mobile phone, operators were uh, pushed to build 3G networks so that they can offer uh, the data services to their customers. 
Now, in 2008-2010, the 4G emerged, and the main reason behind building 4G network was to improve the speed of the internet to mobile users. Now, imagine this scenario that an operator has three independent networks, 2G, 3G, 4G. And this is this this kind of uh, comp this kind of network that has in it three different types of G's 2G, 3G, 4G will definitely increase the complexity because you will be having you will have uh, like devices hardware devices for 2G hardware devices for 3G hardware devices for 4G and you also have software for 2G, software for, 2, uh, for 3G, software for, for... This will definitely increase the complexity of your network and will increase the cost and you will need more engineers to deal with this and increase the problems and uh, compatibility issues. So therefore, the, with the concept of open RAM, you can, you can separate these from each other in software, not in hardware. You, will, you can have a general purpose hardware and install it on your base station and you can separate the G's just in the software. Each software is responsible for providing uh, a certain generation and it will get connected with all the other services that are provided through that G. Uh, this will definitely decrease the cost, make the system more efficient, uh, more compatible with the new devices uh, reduce uh, the, the need for uh, too many engineers to handle the system and will make it super attractive for operators in the future uh, to get rid of all the of all the unnecessary hardware devices that are complicating their network and just separate them with software so the way they separate these in the the concept of cloud and the concept of uh, they, uh, def separating the G's in software, not in hardware. Uh, this is enabled by something called container deployment or Kubernetes deployment, which is taken from the data center and computer community, because this is how they deploy their applications nowadays. If they want, if a company has different application and they want to deploy them. The most recent state-of-the-art technology that they use to deploy their network, uh, their application is using something called Kubernetes deployment. And this, think of it like it's a virtual machine, but it, the operating system, the resources, the network uh, resources, the features, everything is split based on the needs of the application and they are completely independent from each other to avoid interference or creating compatibility problems. In the old days it was just one hardware, one operating system and you need all the apps to be working on it. But in this case what if the app does not need all these hardwares or all these capabilities it or the hard or a certain app needs more hardware resources, more memory, more RAMs, more this. With the Kubernetes deployment, you can specify and virtualize and split the resources based on the requirements of the app easily without causing any interference. So this is a very amazing new uh, enab enabling IT technology that will benefit the telecom industry significantly. And to understand more about it, how it can benefit the telecom industry, I put here a link for you so that you can follow this link and read more about how you can use this inside your network. Now, Open RAN uh, is a new concept, very recent. Many companies are pushing behind it and they want to replace the old the traditional way of building uh, telecom networks and because it's a new concept there is not much material available about the, this, this new standard, this new technology that's why here I collected few links for you to enable you to learn more about it and understand it better the first link contains a book 
that teaches you uh, the fundamentals, the basic of Open RAN concept. This book is provided by Parallel Wireless, which is a company pushing in this direction and providing solution based on Open RAN. And the, here you have virtual exhibition, Open RAN Alliance, that allows you to check the products, the Open RAN products provided by several companies working in the field. And here, a very interesting article that explains to you the fight between the traditional telecom equipment providers and the new, the new telecom networks builders who are using the Open RAN network. It explains the, 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 the conflict between these two companies and why they hate each other and why they are pushing against each other. And this, the last link, provides you with a few videos that explain the concept of open RAN networks in a, an easy manner so that anybody, even without background knowledge, can understand what's going on here. So, those are some open RAN providers. I told you in the old days, if you want, if you want to, open, to build a 5G or 4G network, you would need to go to the, these companies, Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia, which are very expensive and used the traditional way. But nowadays, there are many alternative companies that can provide you with software and hardware and build complete telecom network without the need for expensive devices or being locked to their system. So among these companies is... Mavineer, Altistar, Parallel Wireless, Amara Soft, very novel company. Even Nokia, they have a product based on Open RAN. And some other companies as well. So all those are companies capable of providing Open RAN based solution. We have also like some companies that are already deploying networks based on open RAN in different in different companies around the world, and here uh, Parallel Wireless and Fairwaves are specialized in open RAN for 2G, Navinar and Parallel for 3G, and uh, Altistar, uh, Altistar and Parallel Wireless Radices are for 4G software. So. As you can see, Parallel Wireless can provide all the Gs in an open RAN manner, manner. That's why it's kind of winning over the other companies who are providing just for single G. So here there are many companies, as you can see, innovators and challengers who are really pushing in the direction of open RAN and making it possible to build inexpensive networks. Those are the traditional providers that I showed you. And this is, those are the traditional providers. And this is the revenue share in the market of telecom equipment by the main, the main uh, service providers for telecom industry, including Huawei, Nokia, Ericsson, ZTE, Cisco, and Samsung. As you can see from the figure, Huawei is, is the biggest share in the market, has the biggest share in the market. After that, Nokia and Ericsson almost the same, CTE, Cisco, and Samsung. Now, this is how it is right now, but 10 years after now, you will see the, the emergence of new companies who are using open RAM systems, and they, these companies will be taking significant share from among these companies. So this is the smartphone market as well. And I think we can stop here. And we can continue next lecture to talk about how to build the open RAN network and deploy it on a Linux operating system and the other details using virtual hardware and using RF front end, which is the USRB device that we will be using. So thank you everyone for being with us today.
and meet you in the next lecture. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Anything? No, sir. So far, don't have any question. Thank you. So thank you too. Uh, so next lecture, we agreed. Next lecture, where this is kind. This was introductory lecture. So this is the first lecture for you in this course. Last last week was just uh, registration week. So next lecture we will be going to the lab together. Yes. I want to make sure that Kirik brings the key because I gave the key to him because he was supposed to do something some hardware related stuff. And then we will go to the lab to see how we can do this. Before that, I will make sure that everything is set up and you can see the USRD devices for the first time in your life and touch them with your hands. And start building uh, base stations and user equipments with these devices. But the task, the task now, the task during this week, I want you to go through this manual. Where is that manual? I, I shared this manual here. Yes, guys, this is the documentation. This is the documentation I'm sharing with you here. This is your first task. I need you to go through this documentation and install install the SRS RAM on a Linux operating system. Now I know none of you is using Linux, all of you are using uh, Windows. That's why I ask you to install virtual machine. Learn how to install virtual machine in your PC and install Linux on top of the virtual machine and then go through this link to understand the comments that you need to use in order to install the user equipment and the base station. Professor, if I may, yes, I need to add uh, one or two uh, points. Yes. First is that uh, when uh, when the other students try to install Ubuntu, for example, Ubuntu on a virtual machine, it can be any other any virtual machine that's out there. Uh, I think it's best that they go uh, and uh, learn some basic commands. Uh, can you share these basic commands with them? Uh, I, I can, but uh, if they write basic commands of Ubuntu, uh, Professor, there are many links. Okay, very great, many links. But, but maybe one good link from you, they prefer to learn from their friend. So, uh, yeah, I, I, can share, I can share with them. And uh, the second comment is that uh, when, uh, yeah, when they are, uh, uh, after they install Ubuntu on the uh, on virtual machine and it's running, and and they uh, go to the SRS that you just shared the link uh, with, which is the 21.04 documentation. I think they should first, you know, watch videos related to uh, the SRS RAN uh, for 4G LD installation that is, I think, available on YouTube. So because uh, when uh, when they will, you know, uh, the the commands that are the uh, the commands that are uh, available on the SRS RAN website. They are, they are, these commands are, are straightforward, are direct, because uh, um, the students, they don't know uh, uh, these steps. Uh, and I think I, I, I have faced some one or two uh, uh, difficulties when I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to uh, run the SRS RAN on, uh, when inst installing, and after that running the SRS RAN on Ubuntu. So it was a very, you know, a kind of tricky situation because uh, I didn't knew about uh, Ubuntu and uh, uh, how uh, how to install something new, which is because on Ubuntu, on especially Linux, uh, every every other software uh, uh, type of Linux, we uh, a person needs to first know the commands, how to install and how where to locate the file and then how to you know run that file from a specific location. Yeah, so that's uh, that's, that's why that's why during this week their task will be learning everything needed 
The, the goal is to install this and build this network, build the base station. Everything needed, the student needs to go to the internet and learn it. Commands, non-commands, Linux, non-Linux, virtual. I don't need virtual machine. I'm not. In, my goal is not virtual machine. But if I need virtual machine in order to build my base station, I need to learn virtual machine. If I need Linux and comments to install it, I need to go and learn these comments. So be goal oriented, be goal focused. Just focus on the, in your goal and whatever needed from you to learn, to reach your goal, just do it, learn it. Yes, we are telecom, we don't deal with, uh, I, honestly, why would we need a uh, virtual machine and other things? But since it enables us and helps us build pay station, I would go and learn it. I would go and use it. Like, Sadiq did it, I did it, and the other students need to do it. Because this is practical course, this is not just theory. You come to the, co to the class lecture and keep listening to me and this. You need to, each one of you needs to practically build it. And this, most of the grade will be on this thing. Uh, each one of you, by the end of the semester, will be able to build 4G, 5G networks. De de install and deploy user equipment sure. and base station and core network. And connect them with each other. First using virtual hardware, then using, uh, using the RF front end. Now, uh, next lecture will be here. You will come to my office at 2, okay? Yes, next lecture, you will come to my office at 2, and I will show, we'll go to the lab and show you the USRB devices that you need to connect with them, mm. okay? But okay. until until the lecture, in, in the, I will give you, next lecture, I will give you two USRB devices and tell you install everything here. Make make base station out of this USRB. So during the week you will learn how to do it with virtual hardware. If you do it with virtual hardware, it will be straightforward to do it with RF front end USRB, the practical stuff. So if uh, now I will see next lecture in the lab. If uh, if if you studied well and you did it and you implemented it with virtual hardware, it will be super easy for you. You will finish in two hours and a go. If you didn't, you will be stuck. And you know most of the grade about this stuff. It's very important that you master it and learn it. And, and it's very useful for you. Very valuable. This they are by far by far this will be the most valuable course for you. The most valuable course, practical course for you to take it during your master. And this course is not available anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And this course, really, I mean, it's it's the, for the first time ever to learn, make you learn something like this. Only companies, big companies learn this. So, Sadiq, uh, you can, you can, you see that in the Gmail I sent an invitation for all of you guys to follow the meeting link. You can email us there, Sadiq, or keep uh, posting things here. Talk with your friends if they need anything, if they need help. But I know that this might be a new experience for many students. They are intimidated. They are afraid. They didn't do this such a thing before. But it's super easy. Once you get started, it's super easy. The, the, the documentation I shared with you has step-by-step -step explanation. After, after you do this, I will be going with you through the code and explaining the functionality of each code, what does each code mean, what does each one. You understand me? So that you understand the code fully. And that once you understand the code fully, you, start, you can start contributing and playing with it and using it in your masterpieces and test your ideas with it. So I just shared the uh, Ubuntu commands link. Yeah, keep sharing related stuff. Share share the videos as well here with the students to uh, to see them as well. The videos that you use you, you just said that they are useful. Okay, Sadiq, share the videos link as well. Now uh, see how many tasks you have. You have the task for those who don't know digital communication. It, uh, this is optional. It's up to you. 
if you can move on with the course without the need to the, co to the digital communication course, it's fine. But for those of you who feel they are not good in digital communication, you need to watch the lectures, the links I shared with you. Okay? You have three tasks. One, follow the documentation of S. SRS and to build a simple end to end network using virtual virtual hard drive. What's the name of the virtual hard drive socket? ZQ ZMQ. ZMQ. You will you will see it in the documentation. Just search ZMQ. This is the first task. Why this task? Because next lecture you will be invited. You will give it. You will be given two USRB devices. The cost of each one ten thousand dollar. Twenty thousand dollar in your hand. I will tell you connect them with your PC. If you have more than one PC, bring it with you. But since you will be doing this with your friend, each two will be working with each other. Uh, not so you one, one of you will act like the, the smartphone and the other will act like the base station. So that next lecture, so that next lecture, each each group. Yeah. Yeah. I have shared the video links related yeah. to 0MQ, ZMQ. Very great. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, just a little bit different because this is previous videos that, are, that were uh, you know, related to SRS LT. Come on. Okay. Now, this is USRB. This is the first task. Okay, guys. This is the first task. Until next lecture. Yeah, Yazid, if you have virtual machine or, and you install Kali Linux on it, you can also install Ubuntu on it. You know how to yeah. install it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you install, you, a, a, a virtual machine, it can even run Android. Uh, any, anyway, yeah. but this, are, it's a, uh, I'm not sure if uh, SRS runs on, Linux, uh, on Kali. No, yeah, no, professor. No, uh, it's uh, basically uh, designed for Ubuntu. Ubuntu, the designed S only yes. for Ubuntu. Oh, okay. Yes, the SRS. Yeah, SRS ran a website and the company they uh, officially uh, released commands and uh, architecture of the SRS software is related to Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Official. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, it. So you need to install a new virtual machine. Not a new virtual, a new operating system on your already existing virtual machine. This operating, yeah. this is Ubuntu, and you need to to install. You need to follow the document on Ubuntu, not Kali Linux. Okay. Very great. So the second task, this is task one, task task uh, task two. You need if you are not compatible with digital communication. You know, you need you need to watch the you need to watch the the videos of digital communication basics. Why this is important? You may not need this now. You may give priority to task one. But you may need this, the second task, when you start dealing with the code from the inside. You will, if you are not good in communication, digital communication or wireless, you will see yourself lost. You don't know what's the meaning of quam, you don't know what's the meaning of 16 quam, 64 quam, you don't know what we mean by, by PAPR, by OFDM, or NOMA, or this. You, you need some bit error rate. I know many of you are familiar with these, but for new students, they might find themselves confused once they, once they move on to the code, inside the code. 
the code written by SRS RAM, the videos of digital communication course. Task three, task, task two now optional, but you, you will need it later on. So priority task one, task two, task three is the lab course. Task two is the theory of digital communication course. Task three is the wireless lab course, which gives you hands-on experience of how to transmit receive using hardware. So you have three tasks now, but the most important one is the first, because next lecture you will during this week you will be testing with virtual hardware. Next lecture you will be testing with you will be testing with the USRB devices. So I think the, these things that I written along along with the things that Sadiq shared with you. Of course, Sadiq knows this because I already assigned this task to him earlier. So I think we are good to go now. Okay, Sadiq. Okay, everybody. Good? Good. Very great. Please update me about this and we meet you next lecture in my office. You know my office. Everybody knows my office. Yes, we're here. Yes, okay, sir. very great.